Hi, I'm Mike Bellevue. I'm the black powder editor for Guns of the Old West magazine. And today we're going to be shooting Taylor's Top Brake Frontier Model Revolver. Now, this is a clone of the Smith & Wesson New Model Number no. 3. And it's made by Uberti in Italy, and it's imported by Taylor's & Company in Winchester, Virginia. And we're going to take it out to the range and see what it can do. Taylor's new model number three Frontier is a replica of a variation of the Smith & Wesson new model number three revolver. Now this picture is of an actual Smith & Wesson new model number three. It was made from 1878 until, eight, until uh, 1912. But because all the frames were made prior to 1898, even the guns made in the 20th century qualify as federal antiques and you don't need an FFL to buy them. Uh, the total production quantity of the new model number three was just a bit over 36,000, which puts the new model number three well behind the Russian model in terms of the total numbers made. Most of the new model number threes were chambered in 44 Russian, but limited runs were made in 14 other calibers, so there are a lot of variations out there. One of the new model number three's improvements was its grip which was judged by people at the time to be more comfortable than either the Russian model's grip or the Schofield's grip. And as with all new model uh, number threes, the Frontier model was a top brake design, which meant you could open the gun and kick all the cartridges out at the same time, uh, which was a big advantage. Loading the Frontier top brake is a pretty easy proposition. Put the hammer on half cock to release the lock. Grab the, uh, the rear sight with your, your fingers, and that exposes the cylinder, and then we'll just drop them in. And it's even easier if you're not trying to balance it on camera. Okay, now I'm going to bring it to full cock, and that puts an empty under the chamber, and we're good to go. Well, we've got Evil Roy lurking 15 yards downrange. We've got the Taylor's Top Brake, new model number three clone, all loaded up. Let's go see if we can make them ring. Okay, well, this gun is shooting very high. It's the first time I fired it. So I had to aim right at Evil Roy's crotch to get a center mass hit. But at least now I've got an idea where it's heading. One of the great strengths of the Smith & Wesson top brake design is that you can unload all of your fired cartridges with just a flick of the wrist. <laughs> Maybe an extra flick sometimes. The single action Frontier model was really a bust for Smith & Wesson. The originals were chambered in 4440 and they only made 2,000 of them, but they still couldn't sell them. Most of these guns were sold to Japan and many of them were converted back to 44 Russian. Now, while the single action Frontier was a flop, the double action model was very successful with over 15,000 produced from 1881 until 1913. 
uh, this is my personal double action frontier model in the picture here. Now, the Taylor's clone differs from the Smith & Wesson originals. Uh, first, it's not chambered in 4440, it's chambered in 45 Colt. Second, the Taylor's rear sight is really a lot better than the sight on the originals, which I consider the sights on new model number threes to be almost unusable. But uh, the Taylor's clone has a very good rear sight on it, much better than the originals. And a third major difference is that the Taylor's gun has a cylinder relief screw at the top of the frame. And this is a feature that you find on the Russian model. You don't find it on the new model number three. And we'll just give you a look at the top of my double action uh, close up so you can see what I'm talking about. And essentially, the same upper is used in the single action model on, on the real ones. So those are the differences. Well, let's see if we can take out some water bottles with the Taylor's Top Brake Frontier model. Now this gun is shooting way high, so I'm not entirely... So this gun is shooting way high, so I'm not entirely sure that I can get them, but we're going to try. Well, given all the windage, I'll take what I can get. I'm no quarter. Let's try uh, the top right on some homemade bottles. Got him. Well, I'm getting really crummy on the cylinder. You can probably see how it is. I've had about 30 black powder rounds through it so far, and it's just starting uh, to lock up. Time to run some ballastol on it. Let's make a little bit of fruit salad. We've got a watermelon set up downrange. And we've got the Taylor's top brake loaded with some good smoky powder 45 Colt loads. Let's see, let's see how they do when they come together. Well, I guess we got to admit that that 45 Colt black powder load is no 44 Magnum because we've all seen what a 44 Magnum will do on that. Well, let's finish up with the bad guy's view, Taylor's Frontier model. 